we're going to proceed with our drive train. We have the bottom bracket to install. This is a, a PF30, press fit 30, uh, about a 46 millimeter outside diameter. It's a 30 millimeter spindle through here. We have some bushings available um, through the uh, BBT 30.3. These bushings allow the uh, cups to be pressed. Um, they're going to be pressed into the, uh, the shell here. We can see a large, large shell. Uh, we will not, not be using any grease. This is a dry fit uh, plastic uh, surface into the uh, aluminum here. Uh, if it was a sloppy fit, we would actually be using um, a uh, retaining compound. So uh, we'll proceed here. We're using the, uh, the HHP3. It's a headset press and a bottom bracket press. Pretty much anything you want to press kind of press. So uh, we'll do both sides at this, both sides together. If you lack uh, the bushings, if you lack the, uh, the bushings that help center it up, uh, you're better off just pressing one, one cup at a time. So, carefully engage everything, and before we continue pressing tight, let's see that we're properly aligned. Bring this up slightly. It looks like we're we're pretty well aligned. Okay, so we simply run these in and they engage and press all the way to the shell. And uh, that is all there is to this one. So, done. Although we have the head tube machine and the fork is, uh, is faced, uh, we're not going to put the fork in next. We're going to proceed with the, uh, the cranks and pedals. Uh, I like this process a little better um, with the fork in the way. It makes it a little more awkward working down here because I prefer to pivot the bike. Now the bottom bracket is up where we can get at it, um, do good uh, leverage, uh, see what's going on. So next, we're going to install a uh, crank. This is a, a BB30. Uh, system, so a 30 millimeter spindle. Good idea here, apply some grease on these slip surfaces, also inside the threads and on the spline, so that's, that's good there. Let's install this into, into the bike, gently tap it through there. Sometimes a mallet's also necessary, a little more than, uh, than gentle does not hurt the, uh, the bike. Uh, the crank arm is going on next. The afterburner model of the FSA has an adjustable uh, nut that unthreads from the arm. It's gonna take up the, the lateral motion uh, in the crank system. So let's go select one of our, uh, our tools. The HT10 here will be useful. So, we will use care to install this at uh, 180 degrees and spin that down. There we are. So without the fork here, we can get good mechanical advantage and uh, pull this properly tight. So again, moving the bike where we need it. Uh, the recommendation uh, from this manufacturer, FSA, Full speed ahead is 45 newton meters, which is a pretty healthy torque. Uh, so we're going to switch to a uh, torque wrench. We're going to go the TW6 and run the indicator up here. 44, and then I'm going to add another pound, or not pound, <laughs> another newton force. Uh, for 45 newton meters and then uh, work the two opposing levers, the crank arm being a lever, torque wrench another lever, back and forth right there. That uh, click, the resonation going through the wrench tells me I'm at 
the uh, 45 newton meters, so that, that's good. Uh, this drag that we get here, that's just normal um, seal drag from the system. That simply is the way uh, these, uh, these bearings are. We do need now to take up the side-to-side uh, -side, uh, motion of the crank. We don't want it uh, moving left to right on us when we ride. Uh, that's what the, this adjustment nut is for. So we, we have it backed against the crank. We're going to run it toward the bearing gently, gently, gently until we just, just strike it uh, and then stop. We're not trying to push tight into the bearings, just simply stop at the bearings. And then there's a small set screw, a 1.5 millimeter hex wrench in there that locks that nut in place and uh, that's, that's ready to go. So the cranks are, are uh, ready for more, more work with the pedal installation. The pedals will now be installed. Uh, we have a left and a right side pedal. Uh, thread direction is different for both sides, the left side and right side. Uh, we will begin also with some thread preparation. Uh, the slope of the thread of the right will slope up, upwards to the right, a clockwise tightening pedal. Uh, the uh, left side pedal, the thread direction, uh, when viewed vertically, slopes up to the left. It tightens toward the left or counterclockwise. Uh, both sides should, uh, should uh, have some thread preparation. Uh, Anti-seize here is going to be used on a mountain bike, uh, more durable than grease. Grease certainly acceptable, uh, but the anti-seize simply going to be stickier and, uh, and more durable through the stream crossings and mud and such that we get in, uh, in mountain biking. We have now prepared the threads of uh, both our left and right side pedals. Uh, we're going to install now. We select a, a hex wrench. Uh, we have to make sure, of course, our thread is started square uh, with the threads in there. The crank, to do that, we're going to insert the tool through the crank and then uh, turn it in clockwise. Seen from the face of the crank, from the, the mechanic side, it looks clockwise. We come from the back side and view it this way. From the back side, it appears uh, counterclockwise. And that's the direction this wrench needs to, uh, to turn. Now the, the position here is uh, rather poor if you look at the mechanical advantage of our two levers. One lever being the wrench, the other lever being the crank itself. So our, our two levers should be much closer together in angle. So we've, we've repositioned the wrench. You pull uh, with the, the pedal wrench towards us we're going to push away with the opposite arm. There's our two opposing levers and give us full torque. It's about a 300 to 360 inch pounds of effort. So that's a pretty good, pretty good pull. The other side is uh, repeated and uh, both sides now are, uh, are finished and uh, we're ready to move on to the headset.